Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and in this video, I'm going to present some picture tests in practical anatomy of the lower limb. This video will deal with the anterior and medial compartments of the thigh. You may use the video as a revision or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend some time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Through which canal does the yellow arrow pass? Name the abdominal opening of this canal. Let's start identifying the region. This is the region of the femoral triangle on the superior medial aspect of the thigh. You can see the base of the femoral triangle. This is formed of the inguinal ligament. And here is the apex of the femoral triangle. It should be located down. And here you can see the medial border of the femoral triangle. This is the adductor longus muscle. Here there is the sartorius muscle. Both the adductor longus and the sartorius muscle, they are cut as you can see here and they have been moved from the normal position but this is sartorius muscle because I can trace it up to the anterior superior iliac spine where it arises from and this is the adductor longus because I can trace it up to the pubic bone where body of the pubis where it arises from and then we can see the contents of the femoral triangle they are in the form of a van from medial to lateral so we have the vein artery and nerve all carry the name femoral. It is important here to understand that two of these structures, the artery and the vein, they are surrounded by a fascial sheath. And this fascial sheath is the continuation of the extraperitoneal fascia in the abdomen. We have anteriorly the transversalis fascia, which is located deep to transversus abdominis muscle, and posteriorly the iliacus fascia. Here's the iliacus muscle that covers the iliacus muscle. So this fascial sheath continues beneath the inguinal ligament in the form of a funnel-shaped fascial covering, covering the artery and the vein, and then it fuses with the adventitia of the vessel, the outer layer of the vessel, and is divided into septa. You can see here it is conical in shape. It's divided in by two septa into three compartments. So the lateral compartment contains the femoral artery while the middle compartment contains the femoral vein, and the medial compartment, in fact, it is a potential space. It contains lymphatic vessels, a lymph node, and some fatty tissue. So it's a potential space. Note that the nerve is located outside the extraperitoneal fascia, and therefore it's located outside its extension into the thigh. So the femoral nerve is not present in the femoral sheath but the vessels are located within the extraperitoneal fascia, and so they are contained within the femoral sheath. Now, returning back to the medial compartment of the femoral sheath, which is a potential space that allows for the dilatation of the vein whenever there is increased venous return, this has an abdominal opening here, and this abdominal opening is called the femoral ring. Of course, this is going to uh, be um, as a potential weak area in the abdominal wall, and it might predispose to the formation of a hernia. That's to say the passage of um, an omentum or a viscous from the abdomen to the outside. And this is what we call the femoral hernia. It is different from the inguinal hernia, which appears through the inguinal canal above the inguinal ligament. So the arrow passes through the femoral canal and the abdominal opening of this canal is known as the femoral ring. The lymphatic vessels that are present in the canal, they communicate between the deep inguinal lymph nodes which are located here and the um, external iliac lymph nodes which are located in the pelvis. Also there is a lymph node here known as the lymph node of cloque within the femoral canal and uh, this uh, lymph node drains the glans penis and the clitoris. What is the surface anatomical landmark of the point indicated by the asterisk? This point here indicates the femoral artery, and the femoral artery can be palpated 2 to 3 cm below a point that is located between the midway, between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis. Please note that the inguinal ligament, which is the lower free border of the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle, extends between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle, not the pubic symphysis. Here, between the pubic tubercle and the pubic symphysis, there is the pubic crest. So this point where you can feel the artery, or the artery passes beneath the inguinal ligament, is not the midpoint of the inguinal ligament. It is the 
midpoint of the inguinal region between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis. Which of the following is true concerning the vein indicated by the pointer? This is the femoral triangle. You can see the inguinal ligament, adductor longus, and then sartorius muscle. Femoral nerve laterally, then femoral artery, and then the femoral vein. And this is a superficial vein, the stump of a superficial vein, which is supposed to pierce the deep fascia and drain into the deep vein, the femoral vein. This vein is the great saphenous vein. The great saphenous vein starts as the upward continuation on the medial side of the dorsal venous arch of the foot and it passes in the front of the medial malleolus so it doesn't pass behind the medial malleolus but passes in front of the medial malleolus and this is a very important site because this is the usual site where you can cut down make an incision in the skin cut down for the vein and pass an intravenous catheter especially in, in collapsed patients in whom you cannot find any superficial vein. So E is incorrect. Drains into the popliteal vein. Superficial veins in general, they drain into deep veins. And popliteal vein is a deep vein. But here, as you can see, that the great saphenous vein drains into the femoral vein, which is the continuation upwards of the popliteal vein. What it drains into the popliteal vein is another superficial vein in the lower limb, which is called the small saphenous vein. So D is incorrect. Is accompanied by an artery? No. Superficial veins in general, whether in the lower limb or in the upper limb, they are not accompanied by arteries. It is only the deep veins, the veins that are located deep to the deep fascia, they are accompanied by arteries. Like, for example, the femoral vein is accompanied by the femoral artery. Popliteal vein is accompanied by a popliteal artery. But these superficial veins under the skin, they are not accompanied by artery. This is also true for the basilic vein and the cephalic vein in the upper limb. Contains blue colored blood? No, it doesn't contain blue colored blood. Contains venous blood, which is also red in color, but it is deoxygenated blood, but appears to be blue because of the reflections of light through the skin as it is located just underneath the skin. Has valves? Yes, of course. These veins, they have valves. In fact, most of the veins of the body, they have valves. And these valves allow unidirectional flow of blood toward the heart. So these veins, again, they have valves. They allow unidirectional flow of blood toward the heart. But at the same time, these valves are especially important in the region where the superficial veins drain into the deep veins. So here, the valves will allow the blood from the superficial veins to pass into the deep veins, and they will not allow the blood from the deep veins to uh, leave the deep vein and enter the superficial vein, because the deep veins usually they are under pressure by the contraction of the surrounding muscles, and so the blood tends to pass from deep to the superficial veins, but the presence of these valves at the site of junction between superficial and deep veins. For example, this is an important valve here, which is called the saphenofemoral valve, prevent this. If this happens, then the superficial veins will become dilated, they will become tortuous, and this results in the formation of varicose veins. So A is correct. This vein has valves. This is an ultrasound guided nerve block procedure. Which nerve is blocked at this location? You can see here that the ultrasound probe is located below the inguinal ligament in the femoral triangle. And the nerve which is located here, the important nerve, the big nerve, is the femoral nerve. So they are trying to block the femoral nerve. Of course, it is better to have this block guided by the ultrasound. Otherwise, you can feel the pulsations of the femoral artery. And if you go lateral to the pulsations of the femoral artery, then you will meet the nerve. If you go medial, then it is the vein. Remember that the relation here of the neurovascular bundle is the relation of a van, medial to lateral vein, artery, and nerve. What is the root value of this nerve? The femoral nerve is a branch of the lumbar plexus, and its root value is L2, 3, and 4. Name three of its cutaneous branches. The femoral nerve supplies the front and the medial side of the thigh by an intermediate cutaneous nerve of the thigh and a medial 
cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Remember that the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh is a nerve, is a branch by itself from the lumbar plexus, and it is not a branch of the femoral nerve. So these are two nerves, intermediate and medial cutaneous nerves of the thigh are branches of the femoral. In addition, the femoral nerve has a very long branch that arises in the femoral triangle, descends down until it reaches the knee, and where distal to the knee, it becomes cutaneous. It accompanies the great saphenous vein on the medial side of the leg. Hence, the name of the nerve is the saphenous nerve. And then it passes along with the great saphenous vein in the front of the medial malleolus. Should be taken care of when cutting down for the vein, this saphenous nerve. And then the saphenous nerve continues to supply the skin on the medial side of the foot until we reach the metatarsopharyngeal joint of the big toe. The lymph nodes shown in the diagram drain all of the following structures except the. So the lymph nodes here are the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. You can see they are like, they form like a le letter capital T. The vertical limb is along the great saphenous vein, and the horizontal limb is parallel to the inguinal ligaments. These lymph nodes, they drain superficial lymphatics from a wide area, and their lymphatic vessels, they pass through an opening in the fascia lata, with the deep fascia of the thigh, through which the great saphenous vein passes. This is called the saphenous opening. And because there are multiple lymphatic vessels, so the fascia that covers this opening has multiple perforations, and it's called the cribriform fascia, eave-like fascia. So these lymphatic vessels drain from the superficial to the deep inguinal lymph nodes, which are located along the femoral vessels and the femoral triangle. And then the lymphatic vessels pass through the femoral canal to the external iliac lymph nodes in the abdomen. Now these lymph nodes, the inguinal, superficial inguinal lymph nodes, do they drain the uterus? Well, you might think that this uterus is a pelvic organ that is drained by pelvic lymphatics, and this is true. Most of the pelvis is drained by the pelvic lymphatics, but the region of the corner of the uterus where the round ligament of the uterus is attached, the round ligament passes through the inguinal canal and reaches the, in the female, it reaches the labia majora. So there are lymphatic vessels that communicate between the cornu of the uterus and the superficial ing inguinal lymph nodes. This is correct, but keep in mind that this is not the usual lymphatic drainage of the uterus. Anal canal, the lower part of the anal canal, in fact, below the pectinate line, is part of the perineum, and as the region of the skin of the perineum as, um, is drained to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, while the upper part of the anal canal, above the pectinate line, is drained to pre-aortic lymph nodes, the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes. And the rectum here, yes, the rectum, as I mentioned, the upper part of the anal canal together with the rectum is drained by lymphatics that accompany the blood vessels which supply the rectum. These are branches of the inferior mesenteric artery and they will drain into the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes located in the abdomen around the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery, pre-aortic lymph nodes. So these inguinal lymph nodes, superficial inguinal lymph nodes, they do not drain the rectum, but they, in fact, they drain the gluteal skin. Uh, note here that they also drain the superficial lymphatics from the abdominal wall below the umbilicus. Also, they drain the external genitalia, but not the testis, because the testis is uh, drained by lymphatic vessels that ascend up into the abdomen. The testis has descended down during embryonic development and drags its blood supply, nerve supply, and lymphatic drainage with it. But the lymphatics of the scrotum and the external genitalia are drained to these lymph nodes. In addition to that, they drain most of the lower limb, most of the lower limb. There's only a small area on the lateral side of the foot and the leg that are drained by lymphatics into the popliteal lymph nodes. Uh, that is located in the popliteal fossa. But most of the superficial lymphatics of the lower limb are drained into the superficial inguinal 
lymph nodes. So the correct answer here is rectum. These lymph nodes, they do not drain the rectum.